Christian. Thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful that we got to interview you. I would love if you could introduce yourself. Thank you so much for having me. I am Jen Griffith, and uh, I am a urban fantasy romance author based out of the Midwest. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I would love if you could tell us what your books are about. Oh my gosh. I just had this like revelation recently. People ask me what my books are about and what kind of books I write. And I like to just try and keep it simple. I've learned and say superhero romance. So um, urban fantasy for people who know what that is means something, but people who maybe don't necessarily have any clue what urban fantasy is, I say it's like people with superpowers um, and like magical abilities running around fighting enemies and falling in love. So (laughs) my Hellbound series um, takes place in a sort of futuristic near future, I I would say city. Um, And our first story follows a uh, top secret demon hunter. He is our squad leader of the demon eradication unit. And uh, he ends up getting thrown into witness protection with Jovi, who happens to be a demon in disguise. Um, So they uh, obviously get into some shenanigans and end up in some steamy situations, literally and figuratively. Um, And that's where the Hellbound series begins. So Hellbound, um, Holy Smoke was released in February and book two release date is to be announced very shortly. Love it. What inspired you to write your books? Oh, geez. So I've always, always been a writer and I've always been like a fantasy nerd. Like I grew up playing X-Men with my brothers, you know, like running around and doing that kind of stuff. I've always loved that kind of thing. Um, and I, okay. So full story. Um, I was, I went to college for, um, English and creative writing. And after I graduated, I kind of like got lost in the real world, (laughs) Um, doing things like getting a job and doing the grown-up thing. And I kind of, I kind of lost myself. I kind of fell away from writing, which is really the heart of me. Um, And then 2020 happened and I wasn't really doing a whole lot of anything besides sitting at home and reading. And I was reading this god awful fantasy romance book. It was it was terrible. I can't even remember what it was. Um, but I just remember having this moment where I was like, "Oh my gosh, I could do so much better." And that was my sort of light bulb moment. And that's when I started. Actually, I was like, "Why am I not doing this? This is who I am. Why why am I why am I holding myself back from what I really really want to do?" So in 2020, I started writing. Um, and I honestly, I never set out to write a book about demon hunters or like a near future world with demons that nobody can see except these people who have special like technology contact lenses. Like I didn't, I certainly didn't sit there and like come up with all of that and then intend to write it. I just kind of, I started writing and these characters started coming out and they started showing me their world. So (laughs) I always tell people, Hey, if these characters said or did anything, to offend you, like, don't blame me, blame them. Cause that's, I just write the incident reports. <laughs> Love it. When you were writing your books, who were you thinking of when it comes to who your books are for? I, uh, I heard an interview with Quentin Tarantino years and years ago. And something that he said really, really stuck with me, especially as I was writing these books. Um, he said, I, I just started, I started writing movies that I would want to watch and I didn't worry about anybody else. And so that's what I did. I just wrote what I would like to read (laughs) and, you know, hopefully other people like to read that too. It seems like they do. (laughs) Love it. Love it. Um, you touched on this, but how long have you been writing and what made you really sit down and start? Oh, I've, I've always been a writer ever since I was old enough to pick up a pen. That was always my thing. Um, 
I've always been just writing stories. My parents have like overflowing boxes and baskets of, you know, sheets of paper and my like little scribbles and little scenes and stuff like that. Um, and then, like I said, I, I went to college for English and, um, I learned a lot there. I minored in creative writing. I was lucky enough to be accepted into the university of Iowa's undergraduate Iowa writers workshop, um, which is, uh, very, um, it's a renowned creative writing program. So I learned a lot there. Um, and then, I mean, yeah, like I said, I've just, I've always been a reader too. And it was that one moment where I was reading something and I just, this voice just like bellowed in my head, I can do better. So do it. Yeah. Love it. What is your schedule like when you are writing a book? Oh, um, (laughs) so finding time to write and like really sit down and write and focus on it um, is a challenge. You know, we, all of us are super, super busy, especially if you also have a full-time job besides writing. Um, so I, I have what I call, um, dragon days. I, when I first started pursuing this, really pursuing this, I told all of my friends and family Sundays are mine. I pretend I don't exist. I don't, I don't know you. I love you, but you don't know me. I'm not going to respond to anything. I'm not going to answer texts. I'm not going to, I'm not available to do anything on Sundays. Don't ask me, you know, I love you all, but I am guarding this time like a dragon because that's what, that's what you have to do really. When, when you're going after something for yourself that you love, you have to guard that time. And I always, I always say just, you have to be unapologetic about it. I'm, this is my time. I'm guarding it. I love you. I'll be back after Sunday. (laughs) So Sundays are usually my, that's my writing time. Um, I, my creative brain is like a day dweller. Um, I am not a night owl. And so you know, I do have a full-time job. I'm a marketing director and coming home after a full day of work and then trying to sit down and be creative and um, produce something that I'm happy with, just generally speaking, doesn't tend to happen very often for me. Um, So it really is these full, usually Sundays, these full Sundays of like dawn to dusk, you know, and I am just, I'm sitting here actually like right where I am right now, um, sitting here in front of my big, huge living room window with just my laptop and my headphones on and there's nothing else in the world. Um, I'm still sort of learning my novel writing process. I, I, Holy Smoke was my first actual novel. I was always a um, short story writer and um, poetry um, and a songwriter too. My husband and I have a band. um, And so we've recorded a couple of albums. And um, so that's a fun way to explore different avenues of writing too. But um, I had never written a full length novel. So um, Holy Smoke was the first and then Cat Fight, which is book two in the Hellbound series um, is my second. So I'm still sort of I'm still figuring out what my timeline and what my process looks like for doing that. Um, But I tell you what, it's a lot more drafts than I anticipated, (laughs) but I think, you know, what it really comes down to and a lot of authors give this piece of advice is, um, you know, when you first sit down to draft that first initial draft, you just have to get it out. You know, um, and a lot of times I think we writers tend to get in our way and do a lot of um, self-editing in the moment. And that really just sort of bogs everything down. I know at least that's my that's probably my biggest challenge um, is I'd, just getting in my own way. So. I'm hopeful that as I continue to produce the books in the Hellbound series, that my process, that I'll kind of be able to refine my process and um, get things to maybe a little bit of a, a faster pace. Um, Cause it's, it's probably like um, maybe a year from like start to finish um, for these first two. 
And that is with rounds of editing with my editors, you know, and, and stuff like that too. But hopefully book three will go a little bit faster. <laughs> Love it. Well, what do you need in your writing space to help you stay focused? Um, a whole lot of like nothing. So I have this beautiful, I'm very lucky that we live out in the, we live out in the woods in the Midwest and I have this wall of windows at the back of my house. And so I literally like, I, I take just my, just my laptop on a little like drink stand and nothing else. And I cram myself as close to that window pane as I possibly can. So I'm just, I just have woods out in front of me. Um, and then my laptop right in my face. And then as I mentioned, you know, my husband and I are musicians, so it's pretty typical that he will be, God love him, um, you know, practicing guitar, (laughs) um, sometimes loudly, let's be real often loudly. And so my, uh, my headphones, uh, noise canceling headphones are essential to me. I listen to a lot of like deep focus music or, you know, sort of like chill, um, future garage music. Uh, I have a lot of YouTube channels that play that kind of stuff that really does help me focus. Oh, and sometimes, um, you know, gin (laughs) and, and, or fireball, depending on the time of year. That's my, as my husband calls it, my dragon fuel. So he, uh, he has dubbed himself the dragon keeper. And, um, when I have my dragon days, he will, um, just come and produce snacks and beverages in front of me. So I'm a lucky, lucky girl that helps too. (laughs) Love it. That goes into our next question of what is your favorite writing snack and drink? Ooh. Okay. So, um, I'm a big fan of Triscuits and cheese cubes, you know, finger food that, um, doesn't leave your fingers all messy because, you know, we're on the keyboard. Uh, and I, you know, it's fitting for the name. I, I love gin cocktails. Um, so I love a good little tart gin cocktail or, um, sipping on some fireball on ice. I'm also a huge tea drinker. So, um, herbal teas in like a variety of fun flavors that tends to be what I'm slugging when I am, (laughs) when I'm sitting here at the laptop. Yep. Love it. What type of books do you personally enjoy reading? Um, I mean, yeah, I'm a huge fantasy romance, urban fantasy romance reader. Um, probably more urban fantasy than, than like high fantasy, but, um, I read it all. I read, um, I'm primarily a romance reader in like a variety of the sub genres. So that is pretty much what you will find me reading. Um, I do also listen to a lot of audiobooks and, um, those are pretty much in that same sort of realm. Um, when I'm listening to audiobooks, I tend to gravitate a little bit more toward the um, like fantasy, urban fantasy, and maybe a little bit less on the romance because sometimes that's let's it's a little awkward, right? <laughs> sometimes, especially if you're in the car with somebody else, that's where I listen to my audiobooks. But um, I will say that is how I got my husband into reading, you know listening to things like the Harry Potter audiobooks, which are amazing. And, and he is into like, you know, the kind of like thriller sort of stuff. So we dove into like the Kate Daniels, um, audiobooks, the graphic audio. And, and now he is, now he's reading, he's devouring books on audio. So I think that's fantastic. Speaking of audio, I just found out, and I hope it's okay to say this, that, um, the audiobook for Holy Smoke, Hellbound Book One, releases July 30th. So you're going to have it in your ears July 30th. I'm super, super, super excited about that. Love that. Are there any books or authors that inspired you to become a writer? I have a lot of, I have a lot of inspirations. Um, 
I think I first really truly fell in love with books and what they can do um, for people because of my dad. When we were little, I was probably like eight, eight, nine. Um, and I have a brother who's a couple years older than me. My dad started reading the the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings series to us. So every night we would read a chapter or two. He would read it to out loud to both of us. And I think that's when I really realized the power of books and what they can what they can do for us. They're they're transporting. They take you to another place, another time, another world. And so the the Lord of the Rings series is always going to be like the pillar for me that on um, on which I stand. You know that was really the the it is still the most magical one for me because of that. And then in my more like adult era. Um, I am a huge fan of J.R. Ward and the Black Dagger Brotherhood. That was really post-college. Somebody lent me the first book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. And that was really what sort of like snapped me back into reading for pleasure. And I had never really read, I had never really read anything like those books. The that was kind of my first like urban fantasy and my first urban fantasy romance. Um, And it was so, those books, if you haven't read them, they're so punchy. Like they're, people think of romance and they think of, you know, like the old bodice rippers, you know, we've got Fabio and his hair. And no, these guys are like stompy, alpha bros. They have major attitude. There's F-bombs flying everywhere. And I was just like, this is awesome. This is, this is me. Like, this is the kind of stuff that I want to read and I want to write. So the Black Dagger Brotherhood series has an enormous influence on me because of those things, because of like the attitude of the writing. That's, that's really what sort of made me feel like, huh, maybe I, maybe I could actually like write the way that I would want to write um, because I see her doing it, you know? Um, and then Nalini Singh is another huge influence for me, the Psy Changeling series. Um, I think her writing is beautiful and she does um, this mix of like technology and um more like primal shapeshifter kind of thing. So that was her changelings are animal shapeshifters. And that was the first time that I had read anything like that too. So um, those are, those are my two biggest influences as far as authors go. Mm -hmm. Amazing. What books did you grow up reading? Did you have an all time favorite? (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, you know, as I said, the the Lord of the Rings trilogy, The Hobbit, is always going to have, like, that place in my heart. Um, but, I, I mean, I just grew up devouring it, all kinds, all kinds of books. Um, the, the Lord of the Rings is probably always going to be the one that I hold dearest. Um, but... And I mentioned the Harry Potter series, you know, I read that as they came out. And if you haven't listened to those audiobooks, by the way, uh, you a thousand percent should, because Jim Dale is amazing. He does all of the voices and it's incredible. Incredible. (laughs) Love it. On the other side of that, now as an adult, what are your favorite series or authors that if they come out with something, you automatically grab it? Um, well, as I mentioned, J.R. Ward and Nalini Singh, those are huge influences for me. Um, I love their work. Gina Showalter is another one. Um, her Lords of the Underworld series is a big influence for me too. Um, I mentioned Kate Daniels, so Ilona Andrews. Um, I read pretty much all of their stuff. Um, those are kind of my like my auto buys. It's super interesting. I, I really love seeing what's happening in the romance world right now. Um, especially with, there's a ton of different social media groups, um, that have 
absolutely just exploded across all of the different platforms. And it is amazing to see how people are so welcoming and open with each other within this genre. You know, there's like, there's no, (laughs) there's no shame to be found. It's like, whatever you're into, uh, there's a book for it, you know, that no matter what it might be. And people, uh, people are just so supportive of each other. So um, all of these different, all these different platforms are giving all of these different kind of recommendations for books that a I didn't know existed and and b I absolutely love so I am starting to read a lot more like fantasy rom-coms and monster romance right who knew but there are a lot of up and coming authors and more like niche authors within all these little subgenres that deserve a ton of love because the creativity is incredible and just the the exploration of all of these different all these different aspects of romance and what we're all into are absolutely fascinating love it what would you tell someone just starting out with reading again i think what i would tell somebody who's just getting back into reading is don't take it too seriously. I think that a lot of times when people are sort of, when people talk about books, they take themselves so seriously. You know, you have all these like highbrow book clubs, you know, and things that are, you know, they're they're supposed to be People, I think sometimes people feel like when you're reading a book, it's supposed to be like this elevated thing and that is noble, you know, and fantastic, you know, book club fiction is, is fantastic. There are a lot of amazing books out there, but I think somebody who's just getting back into reading, like number one, just read something that you love. Just read something that's fun. Reading should be fun. It should be an escape. Whatever that looks like for you, go for it. You know, if you want to read something about a minotaur falling in love with a human, then by God, do it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. On the other side of that, what would you tell someone just starting to write their own book? Kind of the same thing. Um, Write what you want to write. write. Write what you would want to read. And don't hold back. Don't. Don't worry about what anyone in your orbit is going to think or what they're going to say about it. Don't let that get in your way, especially I think romance writers um, and especially like the fantasy romance writers. I think there's a lot of fear of judgment or what's my family going to say? What, what's this person going to say, you know? Um, And there can be like a little bit of, shame and fear about that. Don't let that garbage into your head. Just write whatever the hell you want to write. Love it. What's one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? Gosh, I don't know. I think you'd probably have to ask them. (laughs) Um, Sometimes people are uh, surprised to find out that I am um, a singer. I, my husband and I, I mentioned, um, we have a band. It's like a modern speakeasy band. So I uh, am the lead vocalist and we recorded our first EP in Nashville in 2018. Um, And then we play, you know, we play shows um, throughout the year and record other albums and stuff like that. So I think that tends to be something that people, that people are a little bit surprised by. They, people kind of don't expect that. I also am the front woman for a band. Love it. Is there anything you would like to say or add? I think I would just, I just want to reiterate to people, whether you're reading or writing to just do what you love and 
don't hold back and enjoy the ride. I think that's what I would, if people would take anything away, (laughs) that's what I would say. Amazing. Where's the best place for readers to find your books? I know some readers love signed copies. Is that an option and the best place to connect with you? Sure. Um, So you can connect with me on um, on Facebook, Jen Griffith Official, at uh, on Instagram too, and um, you know you can always go to my website and send me an email. Um, as far as copies of of my books go, you can find them anywhere. You know, if you're an ebook reader, you can find them on Amazon or Kobo or um, Barnes and Noble. You can order hardcover and paperback from those places. Um, I will say that I am very, very lucky to know an amazing local bookstore um, in Iowa, which is where I'm from. And we often partner with each other to do special editions. That's where you can find signed copies of my books. So HEA, which stands for happily ever after HEA book boutique, which is in Marion, Iowa. So I'm absolutely putting in a plug for them. Um, she is an incredible bookish babe and businesswoman. Um, and she does a ton of fun stuff. So check her out, HEA Book Boutique. Um, you can find her on all the social stuff too. Uh, and that's where you can find signed copies and most often special editions of Jim Griffith books. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful that we got to interview you. We'll be sure to drop those links in the show notes. That way everyone can find you. And again, thank you so, so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Happy reading. Thank you.